Dear friends, the duct pressure losses in the HVAC system must be found in order to determine the fan capacity or to select a fan. So this topic of discussion today would be the calculation of the external static pressure or the total pressure calculation in order to select the fan capacity. So this is a very, very relevant topic and a very practical one too. We need to have an understanding of the system total pressure losses in order to select a fan. By system, I mean the HVAC system and it includes the duct system as well as the air handling unit or air washer as the case may be. So the system total pressure loss is defined as the total pressure loss through the duct path that has the largest pressure loss. So when you are talking about the external static pressure, we have in mind the pressure loss which is to be the largest pressure loss in a given duct path. Okay, so it is usually the path which is the longest one that gives us the external static pressure as a maximum static pressure to be overcome. But at times it could be even a relatively shorter path, relatively shorter in the sense that it might be a path which might contain an unusual number of fittings or devices with large pressure losses. So external static pressure calculation is done generally for the longest path but not necessarily so because there could be a path which is relatively shorter but might have more losses. So this has to be kept in mind when we are to discuss the external static pressure calculation for fan selection. So let us first have a look at some terminology. What exactly is the external static pressure? What do we understand by the term system pressure loss and what it has to do with the understanding of static pressure and velocity pressure? So in a simpler terms, if, I, if you want to refer to this diagram, if you refer to this diagram, this is the diagram where there is a flow of the fluid in a pipe or duct. Okay. So in our application, when we are talking about HVAC, so our fluid would be the air which is to be conditioned, okay, or the air which is uh, already conditioned and is being supplied to the room. Okay. So suppose this is some air which is flowing through this duct, okay, and you see that there are different manometers which would give you the different pressures. So for example, this manometer, which is connected in this fashion, would read what is known as the static pressure. The other manometer, which you see, has its neck inside the flow. It is going to measure the total pressure. And then we would see that this total pressure is the summation of what is known as the static pressure and the dynamic pressure or velocity head. Okay, so now we are familiar with these three terms that is one is the static pressure, other is the dynamic pressure and third is the total pressure. So when you are calculating external static pressure, we are calculating basically why do we require to calculate external static pressure? We are basically interested in knowing what is the pressure to be overcome by the fan to deliver a particular flow. Because in air conditioning, what is important for us is to deliver a particular quantity of air. Let us say that quantity is called as Q. Okay, so we want to uh, condition and supply a particular value that is Q at a particular location. Okay, And for that, if the air has to flow, it has to overcome the pressure. Okay, 
So the pressure which is required by the fan to deliver the required flow rate can be called as the external static pressure. Okay, and as I said, we need to estimate the external static pressure because that is the pressure which the fan has to overcome so that the losses are overcome and the flow would result in the direction. Okay. Uh, as I said, we generally select the longest path, but not necessarily always the longest path for calculating the external static pressure or the total pressure. Okay, we select the critical path or it is also known as index run where the, the, where the air encounters maximum external static pressure drop. Okay, so the index run or the critical path is the duct run with the maximum external static pressure drop. Okay, and we need to understand that when we are putting a fan in the duct system, then at the inlet of the fan is basically a blower actually. Uh, there would be a suction created, that is the negative pressure at the inlet. And at the exit of the fan, we need to create a positive pressure so that the air is driven into the system, into the HVAC system. And that difference, that is the pressure difference across that fan is roughly what is known as the external static pressure to be created at the fan. Okay, so this will be clear as we look at the uh, sketches. Okay, uh, and that to clarify the terms. So let me first again focus on what this static pressure is, okay, and what is this velocity pressure, and what is this total pressure. So if I want to explain the static pressure concept uh, in simpler terms we need to just imagine that the air is not flowing with particular velocity it is simply it is existing in the duct without any velocity and then that air would apply certain pressure on the duct so that would be called as the static pressure okay that is called as the static pressure but now you know that air also has certain velocity with which it moves. So we also need to consider what is known as the velocity pressure or dynamic pressure. So because the air flows with a certain velocity, it also has a velocity pressure. And as we said, the summation of the two, that is the summation of the static pressure and the velocity pressure would be the total pressure. Now you can also imagine that when the air is flowing, it has got a static pressure and it has got a velocity pressure. And if you stop that air, then what would happen is that the velocity pressure would be converted to static pressure and the static pressure would increase. Okay, so this total pressure would always be the summation of static pressure and velocity pressure. And there could be a conversion of the velocity pressure to a static pressure also. Now, when, when we are to discuss this pressure things, we need to look at what are the pressure drops in ducts. Because if there are no pressure drops in the ducts, then there is no need of putting a fan into it. Okay. So we are interested in selecting a fan and we are interested in selecting a fan because as the air flows in the ducts, it would encounter the pressure drops and now why would that be a pressure drop so the air pressure drop has to do with three reasons one is a very well known reason that is the duct could not be frictionless obviously so because of the friction in the duct friction because of the material which is used in the duct it is not a frictionless material so there would be a pressure drop so if the air flows simply along a straight path right then even if it flows around the straight path it would encounter a pressure drop right so that is because of duct friction in your practical hvac systems you would find that the ducts are not simply straight ducts you would find that they are to be bent okay you need 
to bend that because so as to reach a particular root. Okay. So from the ear handing unit, if you want to condition a set of rooms in a hotel, for example, then you need to have a layout of the ducts. And that layout would include elbows, bends, okay, and so on, wherein you need to change the direction of the ear. So when there is a change in direction of the ear, that would also result in the pressure drop. Okay, so the second reason for the pressure drop in the ducts is the change in direction. Then you might find that the ducts cross-sectional area could increase or decrease. So there could be some enlargement, there could be some contraction of the ducts, or there could be some dampers within the duct, and then, then there are openings for suction and discharge, which would mean that there is a change in area of the duct. Okay, so there is change in area of the duct, and because there is change in area for available for the flow, that would also result in the pressure change. Okay, so these are the three reasons why there is primarily the pressure drop. One is the duct friction, other is the change in direction, and third is the change in area. Okay, the speeds would change, the velocity would change, and that would result in the pressure drop. Okay, so this we need to keep in mind when you do the calculations for external static pressure or total pressure, and finally to select a fan. Okay, so this is a pictorial representation of what we mean by the external static pressure, and here you would find that here we are discussing the AHU part wherein there is a coil, then there are filters which would result also in the pressure drop. Okay. So this, this pictorial representation would help us understand that there are various places where the pressure drop would result. Where there will be a pressure drop in the return duct, there will be a pressure drop in the supply duct, there would be pressure drop over the filter, there would be pressure drop across the coil. Okay, all these pressure drops are to be considered when we size the duct. Okay, now we need to be familiarized with certain terms uh, which are used in literature. So, I had already mentioned what is the static pressure drop, and we were talking about external pressure drop and uh, there is also something called as internal pressure drop. So this two together, that is the external pressure drop and the internal pressure drop, uh, the static pressure drop I mean, is also called as the fan static pressure. Okay, it is a, called as a fan static pressure and we can denote it by capital F, capital S, capital P, F, S, P, fan static pressure. So fan static pressure includes both the external static pressure as well as its internal static pressure. Okay. And then we can also find another term which could be called as the total pressure. And this total pressure, as I said, has to do with the velocity pressure plus the static pressure. Okay. So total pressure is static pressure plus velocity pressure, or static pressure is total pressure minus velocity pressure. And in order to arrive at this fan static pressure or in order to arrive at the fan total pressure, we need to do certain calculations, calculations of the pressure drops in the fittings and that would help us to determine the FSP that is the fan static pressure and fan total pressure. What this fan total pressure will include? As I said, it has to include the pressure losses. This pressure losses could be in the suction opening, there would be a friction at the inlet grill. There is not only a suction duct, there are also a return duct. So there would be a return duct and the air would flow. Air is sucked in via the return uh, duct, uh, return grill, and it is that is called as the inlet grill, and then it is taken to the return duct into the AHU. So you would have the pressure loss in that inlet grid. You would have the pressure loss in the entire ducting system, uh, which is a written passage to the AHU. And 
then there would be a pressure drop in the HVAC equipment also. Okay, so HVAC equipment would also encounter the uh, pressure drop, which is called as an internal static pressure, as I mentioned. Uh, from the HVAC equipment, we would have uh, the supply duct, and then the supply duct would encounter the pressure loss. And finally, the conditioned air is supplied to the air conditioned space, and then there is a friction at that outlet grid. Okay, so that would also be the pressure drop. And finally, there is a velocity pressure at the outlet. So all these things, that is the pressure loss of suction opening, pressure loss because of friction at the inlet grill, pressure loss because of the supply duct and pressure loss in the return duct, friction at the outlet grill, velocity pressure at the outlet, and the pressure drop in the HVAC equipment would all be considered as the fan total pressure. And if you know the fan total pressure, you would be in a position to calculate the uh, fan capacity, okay, as would be explained later. So this diagram, this pictorial representation, uh, which Ashley has given us, a very neat diagram, would help us understand this in a bit more clearer fashion. So for example, uh, this is, you can consider as a cage, wherein there is a fan which is to be ultimately sized, the capacity of this fan has to be selected. Okay, so if you look at the pressure with respect to the atmospheric pressure, so you'll find that, you'll find that at the downstream, okay, at the downstream of this fan, at the downstream of this fan or in the return duct section, uh, return duct section, you would find that there is a negative pressure, there is a suction pressure, okay? So you see that this pressure, both the static pressure and the total pressure would be negative, static pressure and total pressure would be negative on the suction side, okay? Suction to the fan side, or it is called as uh, the return duct actually. It is a return duct because the uh, air from the room uh, enters into the AHU, okay? So suction to the AHU or return from the room, okay. All this would have a suction created because of this fan and this suction is negative pressure, a vacuum and this is shown over here, okay. So you see that because of this fan, okay, because of this fan, this total pressure is below the atmospheric pressure and the static pressure is also below the atmospheric pressure. The velocity pressure is always positive. Velocity pressure is always positive. So that is the reason why your total pressure line, which is the summation of static pressure plus velocity pressure, is lying above the static pressure. Okay, because this is positive and this is negative. So negative plus positive would give you less negative. So this is how this total pressure has to be understood. Okay. Then this fan, as I said, would increase the pressure. So this you see is that it's an increase in the pressure because of the fan, okay? And then this would be a positive pressure above the, much above the atmosphere. So in the, in the duct, which is going to supply the air to the air conditioned space, the pressure would always be positive pressure, okay? And much, much above the atmosphere. So this positive pressure, you see that this one, this lower one is the static pressure, static pressure, and this static pressure plus the velocity pressure, this is the velocity pressure, would give us the total pressure. This would give us the total pressure, okay? And from this also, you would understand that this, this is PS. This is PS, this is called as a fan static pressure. Look at this fan static pressure, how it is defined. Okay. This is the static pressure at the supply section, and this is the total pressure at the at the inlet section. Okay, inlet to the fan, inlet to the fan. So this difference is called as the fan static pressure. Fan static pressure. Okay, then you would find that there is something called as PT which is defined. This PT is what? 
so if you add the velocity pressure at the outlet velocity pressure at the outlet this velocity pressure to the fan static pressure fan static pressure that becomes the fan total pressure fan total pressure so this is fan total pressure and we are interested in knowing this fan total pressure if you want to select the fan okay, select the fan so this diagram is a very important diagram uh, which helps us to appreciate the concepts of static pressure velocity pressure total pressure and gives us an idea about how these pressures are with reference to the air handling unit which incorporates ultimately the fan okay now uh, why exactly is this pressure dropping okay so you see that there is a pressure drop over here there is a pressure drop so excluding the fan everywhere you will find that there is a pressure drop so you see the pressure drop here also you see that there is a pressure drop okay so everywhere except the fan there is a pressure drop so why is there pressure drop this needs to be understood clearly so one of the reason is there will be pressure drop in the duct and as i said uh, just because even if there is uh, no elbow there are no bands okay there will still be a pressure drop even if it's a straight down and the reason is because of friction and this how to calculate that pressure drop because of friction we had studied when we discussed what is the friction charge okay so that way that can be easily calculated by using the friction drop, uh, charge okay uh, in, including elbows and bands would increase the pressure drop okay so even if there is an addition of elbow and bands okay uh, those additions would actually contribute in a negative way in the sense that if they are going to increase the pressure drop okay so ideally we don't want elbows we don't want bands okay we want a uniform cross section but in the real life in the hvac systems you would encounter all these things and hence we need to calculate those so how do you calculate those so pressure drop in elbows can be calculated by using some relations which are found in ashley hand okay so there is a ashley fundamentals book a uh, 2009 edition for example uh, I, i have taken some uh, photographs of that uh, just to explain you this is a copyrighted material please note okay you can always purchase or refer to the ashley handbook data uh, for doing such calculations very simple calculations uh, for pressure drop for example uh, the ashley handbook would give you what is known as the fitting loss coefficient fitting loss coefficient and that fitting loss coefficient into into the velocity pressure okay velocity pressure is half rho c square where rho is the density of the air c is the velocity upstream velocity okay into half so half rho c square is the velocity pressure of the downstream air okay so that uh, velocity pressure you need to calculate and you need to uh, by knowing the velocity and you need to uh, look for this value in the data book so that is how you calculate the pressure drop in the elbows so if you for example if the elbow is a round elbow then you need to get this value of cp from the data book okay how do you calculate the velocity velocity is calculated from because you know the flow rate flow rate how do you know uh, flow rate you get from the cooling load calculations and a is the size of the duct so duct sizing is already done so if you know the size of the duct so you know the cross sectional area a and you know the flow rate q from which you can determine the velocity and once you get the velocity okay you can calculate pv and from the data book if you get the fitting loss coefficient you can calculate the pressure drop in the round elbows okay now how do you read those values from the data book so it's very simple for example just have a look at this uh, figure which i had uh, taken from 2009 ash handbook fundamentals okay as i said it's a copyrighted material and uh, you need to purchase this ash handbook if you want to use it okay or you need to refer to the uh, copyright cop uh, uh, handbook uh, in the libraries many standard libraries they do have this kind of handbook so okay. so you see that this is uh, r which is the radius of this okay uh, from the diagram itself it is clear what is r okay 
okay this is the uh, round fitting we are talking about okay and uh, this is r which is the radius and uh, this is the d of the duct round duct diameter of the round duct okay in the diameter of the round duct okay so if you know this d and if you know this r okay and because it is 90 degrees stamped stamped in the sense that it is uh, there are there are no joints so okay so it is die stamped kind of elbow then you can use this kind of data for getting the cp values or uh, co values uh, loss coefficient values okay so if this diameter is 3 inches for example your c not value is 0.3 that is the loss coefficient value is 0.3 if your value comes out to be 4 then it is 0.21 provided this r by d ratio is 1.5 if the r by d ratio is different you will have these different values okay so this is r and this is d we are assuming that this r is 1.5 times of d 1.5 times of this d okay if that is the case for the round fitting then we can use this table for getting the value of loss coefficient okay and then once you get this loss coefficient as i said we can always calculate once you get the loss coefficient we can get uh, calculate the velocity pressure and multiply the two and we can get the pressure drop in the elbows so as simple as this okay so depending upon your value of d value of d you would have the respective values of c naught okay and uh, that's how you get the value very simple so looking at this it would appear to be very simple so what uh, knowledge is required just to uh, know that these values are found in the handbooks and we need to be uh, thorough with what sort of table has to be used for what sort of bends okay uh, if it is a rectangular bend for example rectangular fitting kind of thing it was uh, earlier was a round thing now here this is a rectangular thing okay and is a smooth radius and there are no veins okay there are no veins if that is a case then we need to know two parameters that is h by w and r by w so h is the height uh, height of the duct and w is the width of the duct so generally when you have a duct you can always measure the height of the duct uh, and you can measure the width of that duct okay uh, uh, so in practical uh, cases you need to account for the insulation which is put on the duct in order to arrive at the actual width and the actual height okay so you know the width and you know, you know the height then you can calculate the h by w h by w ratio and you can measure this r which is the bend radius of the bend and if you get that radius of the bend upon w so that would give us r by w so for different r by w's and for different h by w's you would have the corresponding cp values okay and that cp values if you get and if it is a 90 degree turn like this like this then that value k value is one okay, angle factor is one but if it is a different kind of um, if the angle is different for example if the angle is only 45 then we need to put the k value as 0.6 so for example if the h by w if this h by w h by w and this r by w happens to be 2 so if the h by w is 2 and the r by w is 2 then you need to take this value this value as cp which is 0.13 and this 0.13 into this k would give us c naught where c naught is the loss coefficient okay so the loss coefficient into the velocity head would give you the a required pressure drop in the rectangular fittings okay so it becomes very simple you see that if you look at this data uh, then it becomes pretty simple to calculate the pressure drop in the uh, ducts where there are bends okay there are bends okay so uh, such kind of uh, geometries okay such kind of geometries would be uh, obtaining for example there are very very interesting uh, practical geometries wherein uh, uh, we talked about the smooth round die stamp sort of elbow okay uh, where the loss coefficient would be different and there could be again a round uh, elbow but uh, it is not die stamp it would it might have 
three to five pieces. Okay, three to five pieces uh, to make it a round thing, make it a round L. Okay, so in that case, the loss coefficient would be different. It might be metered also. So, if it's metered, means uh, the, 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 there are the join is of forty-five degrees angle. Okay, so round metered kind of uh, elbows are there. There, the loss coefficients would be different. And you had, if it is a rectangular metered, then also the loss coefficients are different. So what you need to be looking at is you need to look at what type of elbow is that. Okay, that kind of data you can always get it from the agency. Okay, where who has installed that or from the contractor, he would give you that data that this is a smooth round uh, elbow we had installed, and this is uh, this is the size of that. Or this is a rectangular metered kind of elbow which is in place without veins or with veins like uh, this kind of data. Then you will have to if actually physically open that, or you will have to uh, believe in the data which is given by the contractor. And then once you get that data, okay, then refer to the Ashley handbook and then look for the loss coefficients. And once you get the loss uh, loss loss coefficients, then we can calculate the pressure drop in the elbows. Okay, so this is how. We need to proceed in calculating the pressure drop in the elbows. Now we have explained two things: how to calculate the pressure drop in the ducts, which are straight, as I said, by the method which we had already discussed in some other video, where I had explained you to how to make use of the friction chart, okay, to calculate the frictional drop in the ducts. Okay, this is one thing that is the pressure drop in the ducts, straight ducts. Now we have discussed how to calculate the pressure drop in the elbows by looking at Type of elbow which is used. Okay, the third is uh, this is also uh, another uh, screen, screenshot I had taken from the Ashley handbook. Okay, where you would see that this is a metered uh, type of construction. Okay, uh, where the angle is 45. Okay, you see that the joint is like this. Okay, so this is the joint. This is this is another uh, duct. This is another duct, and these two ducts are joined over here. And then knowing this diameter, knowing this diameter, okay, and uh, knowing uh, this, you can calculate. Uh, this is 45 degrees. Okay, you can calculate the value of C naught. Okay, for different diameters. So if the diameter is 75, and uh, then the C naught is 0.34. If the diameter is 300 mm, the C naught is 0.34 like this. Okay, so you see that this value of C naught, which is the loss coefficient, depends upon uh, this kind of uh, elbow arrangement, which is in this case is 45 degrees uh, metered kind of elbow. Okay, then uh, if this kind of screens are provided, these are the screens which are provided. Okay, then we need to look at uh, the values of A1 and A naught. Okay, that is a cross sectional areas at the screen. This is screen, and this is A naught. We need to calculate A naught over here. So at the screen A one and uh, the cross sectional area at the screen is A one, and the duct uh, would have A naught as a size. And you take the ratio of the two A one by A naught, and then you can, you might calculate uh, for that different A one by A naught. You might calculate uh, you might calculate the value of Uh, and uh, the area ratio you get, okay, and uh, from that you can calculate the value of C naught. Okay, so this way, this way one can uh, arrive at uh, the loss coefficient. Okay, this is another thing wherein uh, I had shown you a diffuser, a conical diffuser you see over here, and uh, for that, uh, for in order to obtain the loss coefficient in such a case. Again, we need to know this length of this diffuser. That is L. We need to know the diameter D naught over here. Okay, D naught here. Okay, and then uh, where it opens at the plenum, that uh, A one you can calculate by H one by W one by H one by W one. That A one can be calculated. And once you get that A one by A naught, this is A one you get by H one into W one. And you know this is uh, circular, so from this D naught you can calculate A naught. Uh, this as well as this angle, this angle theta, okay, that would give you that would and L by D ratio, L by D naught ratio, L by D naught ratio would give you the loss coefficient C naught, loss coefficient C naught. 
Okay, and for different angles, again, for different angles, you might get this different values, okay, for conical diffusion. So you see that everything is there, everything is there in the handbook, and it's just a matter of looking for the right values uh, by knowing the right thing. Just as you have elbows, okay, uh, you add and diffusers, you also have what are known as the converging transition or diverging transition, okay. So if you know that there are transitions, converging diversion or transition or diverging transition, when you are connecting to different types of ducts, okay, that again, there would be a pressure drop, okay, because there is a change in area over there, okay. So again here, we need to look for the value of fitting loss coefficient from the data book, okay. Uh, either they use C0 value or CP value or whatever, okay. So that value, you get it from the data book and you calculate this pressure uh, velocity head by half rho c square, half rho c square, okay. Uh, where B is calculated from the flow rate Q and the cross-sectional area A. Okay, now how to look for this value? Again, I had taken some example here. Look at this. This is one uh, system I had shown here. And this is other system, okay. So transition systems. Everything is there over here. You, again, you need to calculate A0, A1, and this theta, for different theta values, you will have C0 value, C0 value. Okay. So, accordingly, you can read this value of C0 and substitute in the formula for getting the pressure head. So, this is round to round and this is round to rectangular. Okay. So, depending upon uh, how is this transition happening, whether it is round to rectangular or round to round, uh, your values of C0 would change. Okay. And uh, that, those values we can use for calculating the pressure drop. And as I said, once you do these calculations for the different sorts of transition, as I said, the transitions could be round to conical, then rectangular to pyramidal, uh, pyramid, then round and rectangular, gradual to abrupt. So all these data are available uh, in the handbooks. And uh, what you need to do is that you must know the velocities, the upstream velocity and the up, upstream diameter in order to get the values, okay, and uh, arrive at the pressure loss, okay. Uh, so uh, then uh, you might find that there are T's, okay, T's also are there, converging T's with round branch to rectangular main or converging T from rectangular main and branch. So T's are there wherein you uh, connect the main duct to the uh, room ducts. Okay. So there you, you might find there are T's. So converging T's where different angles also are there, 45 degrees entry branch to rectangular. Then there are Y's also. So all this, uh, if you look at and look at the data book and calculate the loss coefficients. Okay. So everywhere you'll require to know the flow rate. Okay, you need to know the cross-sectional area of the ducts. Okay, and you need to arrive at the velocity in order to calculate the loss coefficients. And once you get the loss coefficients, you can calculate the corresponding pressure drops. So this way, one can calculate the pressure drops of suction opening, then return ducts, the pressure drop in HVAC equipments, supply duct, and so on and so forth. Okay, uh, all this would help you calculate the fan total pressure, and that fan total pressure. How do you use that? The fan total pressure uh, multiplied by the flow rate would give you the capacity of the fan in watts or kilowatts. Okay, so this is how uh, one goes to calculate the external static pressure on drop or the fan total pressure, uh, the method is very simple. You need to have the friction charts with you. You need to have the dimensions of the ducts with you. You need to know the flow rates which are that. Okay, and uh, uh, you need to have the handbook wherein all these pressure drops are, uh, so the loss coefficients, fitting loss coefficients are tabulated. Okay, from that, you can calculate the fan total pressure. You know the flow rate, multiply the fan total pressure with the flow rate and arrive at the 
fan part. Okay, so this is uh, introduction to the fan selection, introduction to how this external static pressure is calculated, how the fan total pressure is arrived at. Thank you very much.